Hello, everyone, and welcome to Math Mashup with Seesaw. This webinar is intended for upper elementary and middle school teachers and students so that we can mash up some math with some good math talk and differentiation and even uh, throw in some positiv positivity and personalized learning as well. I'm excited to have you here with me. My name is Kara Brem. I'm formerly a third, fourth, and fifth grade teacher and also a seventh grade math teacher in Cary, North Carolina, right outside of our capital city of Raleigh. I'm currently an instructional facilitator, but don't let that fool you. I just recently came out of the classroom this past school year, so uh, that role is new to me, but I do love teaching math and, um, taught fourth grade before I taught seventh grade and uh, certainly dove right in. Feel free to connect with me at Mrs. Brem Tweets on Twitter or at Mrs. Brem Math on Instagram. You will see that I am a Seesaw Ambassador. I'm also National Board Certified Teacher. I'm certified in literacy. I know, go figure, right? Math teacher certified in literacy. I'm also a Google Certified Educator uh, Level 2. So um, I'm excited to have you here with me. A couple housekeeping things. Thank you to everyone who is joining me live. We do have uh, a nice group here today. So if you are joining me live, I appreciate you and you get a nice little free pass. Uh, you'll get a certificate for viewing that will be emailed directly to you for watching live. So that certificate of completion for this 30 minute webinar will be emailed to all of my live viewers. So live viewers, no need to listen for a code during this session. Uh, but if you are watching this during a recording, you can get a six digit code that I will give throughout the session. So please make sure if you're watching this in a recording only that you are ready to write down a six digit code and fill out a form and grab that code for your time here today. All right. I am excited to have you with me and share a math mashup. One of the things I wanted to um, just, you know, start off with is that sometimes the simplest things can certainly, you know, be so powerful. I like to keep what I do with my students in math and on Seesaw simple. Um, I like that when I do keep it simple, the students tend to be engaged and then everyone's learning right so simple yet effective here's my first example for you one of the things that i enjoyed doing um, for both my fourth graders and my seventh graders in math was explaining their thinking so that's um, allowing students to solve problems and tell about their problems whether it's solving more complex uh, multi-step balancing equations, for example, like you see in this activity, or it's very simple, you can encourage um, choice and voice on how students share, and you can also encourage students to have some math talk where they're using that vocabulary and working, um, working things out on their own. Let me share with you a student example we have uh, here, let's go. Today we are doing two times a quantity of x plus two equals 164. First we have to distribute two. So we do two times x, that equals two x. And then we do two times two, that equals four. And that equals 164. Next what we do, we have to even it out. So we subtract four away from both sides. That would leave us with 2x is equal to 160. Next, we have to divide it by 2. We should divide both sides to get it equal. Welcome. All right, so you know you can see here, and there's an additional minute and 15 seconds you haven't seen yet, but he does continue to go through and solve his um solve it totally completely correct and check his work with um 
you know, with that math talk, he's bringing in some vocabulary, talking about balancing those equations and all of that uh, can be so powerful. A second quick example that I do have here for you as well is from a fourth grade classroom. Let's see if we can get this started. My computer's acting a little slow. There we go. It has a hat, a head, two arms, two legs, and a body. And also a dog. Okay, so I'm going to pause that for a second. And um, I like to share this example because one of the things that I think is important here uh, for teachers is not necessarily, you know, listening to the students all the time, but it's getting a snapshot of their work and being able to check it in your own way at your own time while listening to them, um, you know share things out. This student really isn't sharing how she solved the problem. She's certainly sharing all the parts of her robot. But the simple part of all of this was that it was with something we did hands-on in my fourth grade classroom as compared to the last example that was done only truly in Seesaw where he was, um, you know, sharing out his, um, his math with just Seesaw. So I wanted to show both of those for that reason. It can be as simple as just sharing and talking through something that's already been done in the classroom. Encourage that math talk, let the students choose. It can be so powerful for them to hear themselves. Um, another example of um, how I use Seesaw and with my students was through real world relationships. I loved having the students see something that they're learning in math and really be able to find it in the classroom or find it in the school. And an example of that would be to do a scavenger hunt. You could take, you know, almost any topic that you're doing and find it in the school and make it into a scavenger hunt. The example that you see to the right is um, goes along with the activity that's listed there on the left, where students went around the room and they were finding radius, diameter, circumference, circumference and area. They were telling me how would they find that um, you know, with objects in our own classroom. And they were using Seesaw to label, whoops, excuse me, let me head back here a second. Ah, they were using it to label. My apologies for that. Uh, so they were able to go into Seesaw and use the camera, take a photo, draw on top of the photo, and be able to, um, to share their learning. There we go. That's what I wanted to click. So here's just a quick. Circumference is the parameter of a circle. Very simple, but very effective. By watching these, I can see if my students understand the parts and the pieces, and I'm able to um, determine that. Now, I can fast forward this a little bit. This is just a chair in our classroom. Students use whatever they wanted. They use water bottles, they use um, markers, you know, the end of a marker, all kinds. So they were able to um, you know, share what they knew. And students who didn't share all the parts and pieces, I was able to go back and determine, well, did they not share because they were, um, you know, truly unsure of what a circumference was or what a diameter was or how to find the area or, you know, was it for another reason? So uh, this is a very quick and simple example from my fourth grade classroom that, um, you know, we were looking at patterns and it was take a picture and share pattern that you find in the classroom. Again, very simple, but very effective. If you're watching and a recording of this webinar, please write down the first three digits of your six digit code, 983. All right, so another thing I'd like to do with my math students is always encourage a positive math mindset. Students often start math and jump into math with the, oh, I'm not good at math, I can't do that, before they ever even try. And I think, you know, as long as you keep that positivity flowing all year long, they're going to build that math, positive math mindset. One of the things that I'd like to do was to um, start by setting some goals and celebrating successes. I, we looked at Mondays as a way to celebrate instead of dread. So we were uh, celebrating Monday and each Monday I had a different activity for them to do. Every Monday, 
I had them uh, click on the activity and share a positive that they had. So you can see the example there for celebrating Monday. They would click the add button. They decided how they wanted to share their positive. They'd be able, you know, to explain why um, they're looking forward to this positive thing in class. Uh, so that's just one example. I have some other examples here to share with you. Here's just one, a student decided they were just gonna type it up as um, a text box or a label. So they were just giving me their example of how, um, you know, they were going to um, make their day amazing and better and really try to focus on, um, you know, getting help if they need help. So it's the little things like that, that if you continuously do them throughout the year, you really can see that student growth. This one along with a Seesaw activity that I do have linked in here, uh, where we, we talked about how success is like an iceberg. You only see part of that iceberg and there are so many things that really are making up that iceberg beyond what you truly see. So this was a student response. Um, what she thought as a seventh grade math student, uh, she said, people don't see all the practice and hard work you put into math class every day. They only see the success that you get on the test. So she's using Seesaw to, um, to share that response. But I think keeping that positivity alive and uh, well in your classroom is certainly something that you, you can't go wrong with. Um, another thing that I like to focus on with my students was what I called the power of yet. And that would be, um, you know, if the student said, well, I, I can't solve that problem. I would encourage them to add the word yet onto the end. So by giving your students the power of yet, um, maybe I can't balance equations. I can't use a protractor to measure my angle yet, but if I did this, I would be able to. If I ask for help, if I practice. So maybe you could even think of one thing that you're not sure that you can do just yet. Um, I can't do handstands just yet. Um, who knows if I will ever be able to, but if I practice on my strength and uh, continue with yoga practice, maybe I will be able to, right? So think about how you could just add one simple word, the word yet, and provide opportunities uh, for students. Here's a quick example. I can't answer a question my representative situation is on emotional relationships. Yeah, but if I try my very best and practice solving it, then I will be able to do it. There we go. Very simple, right? But but the power of yet was so effective, especially with my seventh graders who are doubting so many things about themselves at that age uh, that it, it really was a, a fabulous year um, using the power of yet. And then I took advantage of also um, really trying to get to know my students and building relationships. And one of the things that we did to celebrate Monday was um, called Two Stars and a Wish, where everyone had something that makes them feel proud, um, at least one thing, if not two things, two shining moments that made them feel proud about themselves. And then one thing that they wish that they knew their teacher knew about them as a student so uh, there were some pretty powerful responses here for my students as well uh, so they gave two shining moments you know good grades on an assessment uh, working with partners in class but they wish that i knew that they like answering questions and taking challenges in class and that might not have been something that i knew uh, Another quick example here um, that they were believing in themselves to do good on the next math test and that they studied a lot and gave themselves extra practice. So maybe that's something that I didn't know about them. And, you know, I think it's pretty amazing when you start building those relationships with students and they feel comfortable enough to share with you their teacher. Um, Differentiation is something that allows, you know, at any level, an opportunity for students to have voice and choice in a way that best meets their needs. And I have found over the years that um, I used Seesaw for four years, consecutive years in my classroom, two with fourth graders and two with seventh grade math. And I just found that 
no matter what their needs were, if they have 504 plans, IEPs, if they were academically gifted, it, or anywhere in, the, in between, giving them an opportunity for voice and choice was so super powerful. And CISA allowed me to do that. One of the ways that I'd like to do that was through um, math tic-tac-toe boards. Uh, a choice board would be another uh, name for this. So if you've done them before, I use them in math, I use them in language arts and science, um, a variety throughout my time teaching. But um, you know, I thought it was really powerful that I could adapt the boards to fit my units of study, that I could adapt it to fit any grade level I was teaching, that I could allow my students to, you know, follow the standards that I needed to teach through these boards. And it wasn't just random things on here, everything related. And all of their answers were captured in Seesaw. So I was allowing them choice, because they got to choose whatever three they wanted. And just to kind of bring your eye and your attention over here to the board on the left, I had a free space in the middle. And um, depending on the board, sometimes I would let the free space truly be a free space. Or depending on the student and the board, sometimes I would let the free space um, be an opportunity for them to freely choose an activity that might not have been three in a row, like maybe they want to do these three in a row, but they also like this example activity over here so they could slide it down in or free for them to create their own activity as well. So you can adapt boards to um, you know, to go with all different kinds of uh, subjects and grades and student needs. And I found that they were really great for differentiation. I had quite a variety of students in my class. And this is an example that came off the board to the left. It was um, writing uh, with integers. They were writing a story using integers. One day, Mr. and Mrs. Integer wanted to travel somewhere. They decided the destination had to be above sea level, represented as a positive integer, and not below sea level, which, be, which would be represented as a negative integer, because they wanted it to be close to the mountains. They then had to decide whether they wanted the temperature below zero degrees Fahrenheit, or a, represented as a negative integer, or above zero degrees Fahrenheit, which would be represented as a positive integer. Okay, so she goes on there, but you know, it's just taking those little things and allowing the students to have that voice um, in, in creativity. And you wouldn't necessarily think that, oh, math, um, she was applying what she knew about integers in her very short story there. And it came right off of that choice board and fit with our math standards as well. All right, I also really like um, which one doesn't belong. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but there is a website for which one doesn't belong. And um, I have over 30 different Seesaw activities that go along with that website that are linked on these slides that you're welcome to uh, use and change if you would like. But I like which one doesn't belong because the theory behind it is that math doesn't have to have only one correct answer. So if you look at the example that you see there, the 9, 16, 25, 43, you might automatically be thinking, oh, well, 43 doesn't belong because all of the other ones are squared numbers, right? Well, what if I told you, hmm, nine doesn't belong because it's the only one that's single digit? Or what if I told you nine doesn't belong because when you add the other two digits, one plus six is seven, four plus three is seven, two plus five is seven. So right there, I already have a couple different ways to justify my thinking and share my reasoning. And I think it's important for our students that we share with them that there, there's not necessarily one correct answer in math. That as long as you can support and justify your reasoning, there's plenty of, um, you know, plenty of opportunity for students to have you know different answers and still be correct because the way that they solve them might be different uh, so here's you know just one quick student response uh, students could choose how to respond however they wanted to so we had some audio responses i this was they were using text boxes here um, you know, to put on with as labels, basically. But they gave, they gave multiple different situations um, 
and their reasoning behind it. So there's a couple of examples. Ah, goodness, sorry about that. Uh, there's other examples there if you'd like them. Um, another example that I have here is how I used Seesaw to personalize a learning experience with my seventh graders. And um, last school year, at the beginning of the school year, I had a student come up to me. His name was Connor, and Connor said, Ms. Brem, I really think we could we could play Fortnite in math class. And I laughed at him and said, oh, Connor, we're not playing Fortnite in math class. And he kind of shrugged and walked away. And the next day he came back and he said, I've been thinking about it. I think we can do it. And I was like, oh, good one, Connor, keep going. And then he came back a third day and I said, when he told me the same idea, I said, well, go home, figure it out and maybe we can make it happen. And we did. The students were so interested. Now, you know, not every single one, but we had a special group that came and met um, during a 30-minute block we have built into our schedule to allow personalized learning, um, to allow for remediation, to allow for missed work, things like that. But we had time to capture student interest, and I had a, a nice group of students who were interested in this project-based learning, who wanted Fortnite and math to go together. Connor came prepared and shared with me all the ways that he found that he could connect the seventh grade math curriculum to Fortnite. And I got goosebumps when I heard his ideas. Uh, you know, I think it's pretty amazing when students take learning in their own hands. You can meet them where they are. So much so that we took our learning and presented it at the North Carolina Technology and Education Society conference. So the students were there presenting it and presenting their learning. And I even took it even further and went to um, ISTE, which is the International Society for Technology and Education in Philadelphia this past summer and presented this. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about what my students did, you could click on um, the links or the pictures to the left and it will take you to a website that we created. But a, a very quick example would be uh, we use Seesaw with it too because we captured our learning that they were able to take, you know, and this is a PDF that they created, but they took the Fortnite map and they were figuring out um, there's like a circle in it to call a storm circle. If you know anything about Fortnite, that would make sense to you. If you if you don't, then just know there's a storm circle in there. They figured out how long the map was relative to other um, places that they knew. They figured out the diameter, radius, circumference, and area of that storm circle. So that's just one example of one thing that the students did that really made learning personal to them, that really made learning meaningful, and it meant them where they were. They captured their interests. So think of when your students come to you and say crazy off the wall things, maybe not shoot them down the first time. I mean, I certainly learned my lesson as well. So there's so many different ways that we can, um, you know, make learning and math work for our students. Um, if you would like more ideas, people are willing to share within the Seesaw community all the time. Um, if you're not already, uh, connected on Twitter to Seesaw. Also connect, you know, to Instagram at Seesaw Learning. And there are Seesaw Teachers pages on Facebook, not only just Seesaw Teachers, but individual grade levels. So for example, third grade Seesaw Teachers, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade are lumped together and even high school. So there are um, opportunities for you to connect with the Seesaw community and share ideas and learn from others. There are so many out there uh, for you. And again, my name is Kara Brem. You are welcome to connect with me as well on Twitter or Instagram. But I would like to share the last three digits for my friends listening on the recording, the last three digits of the code that you should write down for the recording is 401. But I thank everyone for their time and hope that you're able to mash up some math as well.